Hello. In this video, I'm going to introduce the joint probability mass function and show you some of the things we can compute from this function. You will then have an opportunity to test your understanding of this function in the quiz and problems that follow. In previous week, we have introduced the cumulative probability distribution function for a random variable. And we have noted that the cumulative probability distribution function tells us the probability that the random variable capital let x is less than or equal to some small x. If we have two random variables, capital X and capital Y, it therefore stands to reason that we can introduce the concept of a joint cumulative probability distribution function. This function would then tell us the probability that the random variable capital X is less than or equal to small x and that the random variable capital Y is less than or equal to small y. Similarly, if our two random variables are discrete, we can introduce a joint analogue of the probability mass function, the joint probability mass function. The joint probability mass function tells us the probability that the random variable capital X is equal to small x and the random variable capital Y is equal to small y. If we want to provide information on the joint probability mass function, we would put it in a table, such as the one shown here. The headings of the columns in this table indicate the values that the random variable capital X can take. The headings of the rows then indicate the various values that the random variable capital Y can take. The values from the joint probability mass function are then contained in the body of the table. This 0.2 here, for instance, is the probability that the random variable capital X equals 0 and the random variable capital Y equals 2. We can recover the so-called marginal distributions for the individual variables from this joint distribution by using the expression shown at the bottom of the slide. These marginal distributions are just the familiar probability mass functions for the two random variables, capital X and capital Y. The particular marginal distribution we are calculating here thus tells us the probability that the random variable, capital X, is equal to small x. Furthermore, displaying the joint probability mass function in the table as above gives us a nice visual way of remembering how to compute this marginal distribution. We simply sum each of the elements in the columns to give a probability that x is equal to a particular value, as shown here. Notice that by a similar log logic, we can compute the marginal distribution for capital Y by summing the elements in each row, as shown here. The fact that marginals are computed in this way is, I assume, the reason they are called marginals. We write these distributions on the margins of our table of joint probability mass values. We can, and often do, use the conditional distribution of capital X, given the values of the random variable capital Y, instead of the joint probability mass function. This is an alternative way to describe the joint distribution of these two variables. The conditional probability that capital X equals small x, given capital Y equals small x, small y, sorry, is given by the expression shown at the bottom of the slide. To calculate the conditional distribution of, of capital X equals x, given capital Y equals small y, we thus first need to calculate the marginal distribution for capital Y by summing each of the rows individually as shown here. Once that is done, we then take the elements of the joint probability mass function from the table and divide them by the elements of the marginal. We can thus con calculate the conditional probability that x equals 0 gives y equals 1 as 0.5. Similarly, the conditional probability that capital X equals 1 given capital Y equals 1 is 0.5 and the conditional probability that x equals 2 given y equals 1 is 0. What we have done here is divide the elements in the first row of the table by the probability that y equals 1. By a similar logic, we can then calculate the conditional probability of capital X having values of 0, 1 and 2, given y equals 2, as shown here, 
as well as the conditional probability of capital X having values of 0, 1, and 2, given Y equals 4, as shown here. Elsewhere in this course, we have learned about computing expectations. It shouldn't surprise you to know that we can still calculate expectations of a function of a discrete random variable if we are given the joint probability mass function by using the expression shown here. The only difference is that we need to calculate the marginal distribution from the joint distribution we were given in the question before we can use this familiar expression. If we are given a joint probability mass function, we can also calculate the expectation of a product of the two random variables by using the expression involving the double sum that is shown here. Taking this further, we can even calculate the expectation of the product of two functions of the random variable by using the expression shown here. These results will prove useful when you come to calculate things like the covariance of two random variables in the problems. The covariance is defined as shown here, and there are examples of how it is computed on the problem sheet you will have to complete. Lastly, a final quantity that you might be asked to compute is the correlation coefficient. This quantity is defined by the expression shown here. To calculate this quantity, you need to compute the covariance for the two random variables. Then you need to compute the two marginal distributions so that you can calculate the variances of the two random variables in the usual way. The series of computations you have to perform is rather tedious to complete by hand. So in the exercises that follow, I will show you how to do all this first by hand before showing you how you can achieve the same result by writing a short computer program. Thanks for your attention as always and good luck with what follows.